Peace, y'all. This is Sa Rock, and I'm rocking with you, KHH. I'm 10,000 years away from any MC breathing. If heaven had a name, then it'd be Sarak and the Shiva. I boot a Krishna Shango, I like Christ you in a believe in heist your followers with a haiku that invite you to our religion. See, I'm the type to fight to fame me and still be in love with the game though. And you the type to love to hate me, you relish in the painful. See, all the greatest prophets had detractors at their table. They the first one making plates from off the fruits of all my labor. Rebuke these smiling faces, take real evil over kind fakeness. Watch me rap a straight line to the pious from the faithless. You pilots trying to crucify messiahs for their greatness. I'm Tony the Tiger, homie, ain't no denying my nature. It's proven a man with no cause will fall from his flaws. So all them charlatans you follow about the drown in their ponds. You can either follow the leader or two step on their bones. Call me Dooku, I neutralize your group attack of the clones, sucker. I'm Millie. I'm here with Sorok for UKHH. Are you excited for your first UK show? I am ecstatic. Yeah. And what are your what are your thoughts on London so far? Um, I didn't get to see a whole bunch of it, but you know, I've had this kind of fascination with with England for a long time since I was a kid. I used to kind of try to play around with the accents. I loved like British like comedies and stuff. I was obsessed with Mr. Bean and all that stuff. <laughs> all that. <laughs> so like I've been so. wanting to come here for a really long time. So to be here and then not only perform here is like a dream. I remember just not not that far back, you know, I was in a little apartment still working 40 hours a week, you know, dreaming about stuff like this. And now I'm here, so I'm beyond excited. Yeah, that's wicked. So um, cultural and spiritual references uh, seem to be a pretty intrinsic part of your work throughout your whole discography. But um, has that been a part of your work since you started out? Yeah, definitely. Um, and a lot of people seem to think that that's a conscious choice. Like I'm, you know, making um, making a, a, a decision to, you know, to rhyme about stuff like that. But it's just a part of me. So I feel like rhyming is just an extension of, of my thoughts and, you know, um, the things that I want to express. So it just came naturally that, you know, I've been spiritual person for a long time you know my culture and um has been uh long been you know just a really essential part of who i am so of course i will ex express it through my music do you think like are there any sort of like specific influences that have kind of brought that out in you my parents um laid a pretty strong spiritual foundation not not anything religious but um just they were into like transcendental meditation um, in the 70s, so they kind of passed that on to us. We had like a family mantra and, you know, so we were exposed to meditation, stuff like that at a very early age. And then um, I went to a school that focused on Pan-African education. So we learned a lot about like West African spiritualities and um, that school imbue imbued like a really strong sense of culture, in particular, you know, African culture. Um, so I've always, I've reflected that since, you know, very early on. And um, just, you know, those things help to make me a better person, help to shape and mold, you know, who I am, especially the, the meditation bit. Um, it was really helpful for me to utilize that to kind of channel this, because by nature, I'm a very just kind of shy and reserved person. So for you know, using like breathing techniques and meditation techniques that allows me to um, to kind of tap into that, you know, that strength and that that power source that I use in my in my music. So your work rate is like super impressive, but the gap between your Metamorphosis EP and your upcoming project seems like pretty long uh, in contrast to the rest. So has there been a difference in your kind of like creative approach this time? Definitely, definitely. I'm, I'm, I think I'm experimenting with different techniques. Um, I'm working with, you know, different artists and musicians as well. Um, and just 
the fact that this album in particular is a little bit more intimate and personal and in its entirety, you know, um, it takes a little bit longer to kind of coax that kind of um, emotion and that kind of storytelling out. Um, so I've definitely been taking a lot longer with, um, you know, creating it because it's really, really special to me. So I want it to be just right, you know. I mean, not that all my albums weren't special, but this one is, is so particular to, like, you know, my DNA, you know, so I have to be careful with it. <laughs> it's like extra degree of realness. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how did your link with Rhyme Sayers come about? This gentleman named Kevin, who had been with Rhyme Sayers for, for a very long time, he was one of the hosts of their, their radio show um and worked within like the fifth element store and then also with like um uh like a and r and stuff like that um he turned the the label owner on to me um and then also uh dessa who's a, a female mc poet and singer um she had uh passed along my music as well to the crew and um we ended up, they ended up inviting us out to 2015, 2015 Sound Set, which is their big festival that they have every year. It's huge, massive, like 30,000 plus people and a very diverse um, hip hop artist from, from new school to, I don't wanna say old school, true school or whatever. And they represent like the five elements of hip hop, five facets of hip hop. And, um, and uh, they brought us out there and we performed, it was dope. And then shortly after the next year, we got um, invited to do a joint label, I mean, a joint venture with them. Um, so, and then we released the Metamorpheus uh, EP. So it's been a really, really dope fit um, because all of their artists really express a degree of just authenticity and originality. And they give you, you know, s space to be like uniquely who you are. They give you space to, figure out like what you want to express and you know time on your project and stuff there isn't like this these these time constraints and this pressure to you know put out either mainstream you know type of work or you know the general guidelines and you got to throw this out at this particular time or throw out x amount of singles and stuff like that like they have they let things happen organically and they pay, pay like such a beautiful detail to like artwork and just like the entire packaging of like an album and it tells a story from beginning to end so it's really dope i've been having a wonderful time as like a self-dubbed goddess where does that come from and what does it mean to you and your music this um like persona almost well you know honestly um rakim you know he he called himself or was called the god mc and you know, it's just, it just implies this sense of being, you know, superior at your craft. And then understanding that you have, you know, you hold divinity within yourself as well. And that, that power and that energy is what, you know, makes us all so unique and, um, and beautiful and purposeful, you know, on this planet. And to, you know, take on the title of goddess, um, it's just kind of cements like who you are. And it kind of gives this, this, this sense that you are uncompromising. You will not be shaped and molded by, by anyone else. You know, you are who you are and you are a dynamic individual and that's, and, um, and that's it. Nobody questions you when you come out and say I'm the goddess MC. You don't get, you don't get, you don't get um, a lot of the um, disrespectful, you know, kind of comments or, you know, the a lot of the B, the BS that women in the industry have to deal with and stuff. Um, when you proclaim certain things, like they, they don't, they don't, they don't approach you in, in a certain type of way. So. Well, that's, that's what my experience has been. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just a powerful thing to proclaim and to set certain standards for respect. Yes.
am so full. I am so full, and to be able to get the chance to share what I love with you is a humbling experience. So I thank you for all of your light and your love and energy, and hopefully I did a good job reflecting that back to you.